Good afternoon once again, uh, everyone. In the Bible, sacrifices are mentioned, and in the Old Testament, it was done by priests. And I heard one minister long ago that he never, or he would not like to be a priest in the Old Testament. Why? Because it's it's a difficult job. It's literally a bloody thing, you know, <laughs> offerings. But in the Old, I mean, in the New Testament, we can find in the First Peter chapter two and verse five that all of us are considered as priests. And you, I read from my those in from the ESV, I think that's whatever translation that, that is, it's still the same. You yourselves like living stones are built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer the spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. I'd like to just discuss briefly three sacrifices that we should be doing. And that first one is found in Romans 12, uh, chapter 12, in verse 1. That's, this is the first sacrifice that we should be doing. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. That is your is the ritual act of worship. Now you can't think, how do I offer my soul as a living sacrifice? I think Brian's discussed that, but the answer can be found in verse 2. If you uh, go to verse 2 of the same chapter, the answer is there. Do not conform any longer to the what? Pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is His good, pleasing and perfect will. I was thinking about this transformation. How do we be transformed? My wife still criticized me the same thing about many years ago. <laughs> I'm not yet transformed. <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know about you, if you already like transformed like Christ, uh, the answer is, as we can, if you read Romans 7, the struggle of Paul about sin. He knows sin because of the law, but still he struggled. The answer is, what did Paul say? Oh, wretched man, I am. Who will save me from this? And his answer is, it's Christ. So Christ is the answer. So our sins are forgiven, but uh, are being saved, as uh, Pastor Merv, I think, mentioned one time, because we are saved by grace, does not give us license to sin. Amen. I think you agree with that, because some are like confused. I am already saved. I can do anything I want. <laughs> like, license to do everything. So, anyway, so, I don't go further on that because it's quite uh, a more, more theological, theological discussion. So that's the first sacrifice, ourselves as living sacrifice by being transformed, by not conforming to the pattern of this world. Of course, we cannot be perfect, as I said, but God will see to it that we are saved by Him through His grace. The second one is in Hebrews chapter 13. In verse 15, this is the second one that is mentioned. Through Him, then, which is Christ, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge His name. This could mean our prayers and songs. We come here to church, what do we do? We sing songs of hymns. And we offer prayers, that's why our worship team are very much appreciated for their efforts of, of uh, doing the worship so the worship uh, thing that we do because without them I think I think I think our 
congregation will be uh, will be lively as there are singing. Uh, see if there's if there's no singing, I should say. So your presence is required. It is much appreciated because uh, if you just imagine so many five of us here gathering, and then I think our singing will not be joyful as should as should be. And the third one. The third one that we do is, of course, obvious. In verse 16, it says there, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So, the third one is our offering. Uh, God knows our personal circumstances. Some of us are, uh, if you can say, in the block, if you can uh, look at uh, financial terms or accounting uh, system, some may be in the red, I don't know. So you know your personal circumstances, but God is well pleased in your attitude of giving. Of course, we do not impose, the church doesn't impose a percentage of what you should give, but it's up, the uh, guideline there is, it's up to you, it's up. Uh, giving is a form of worship, so uh, it doesn't uh, require you to give a certain percentage, as uh, some uh, do, but uh, it's a willing mind that God expects from us and that God appreciates. So I think uh, we now have to take the offerings.